Hi everyone. Today I'm going to paint four partial faces with different skin tones. First I'm applying masking fluid to a few highlights, including a big earring. Masking fluid is similar to rubber cement and it will protect the paper from my paint. I've also applied it to the borders of each section here so they won't run into each other. My first person is a boy with bright red hair and pale skin, but there's actually quite a bit of color in it and I'm starting out with yellow, then orange, to establish the darker areas. This darker color is orange plus burnt sienna, which is a reddish brown. These colors will blur together as they dry and they'll also become a bit lighter. Our next model has darker skin with golden undertones. I'm painting water over his skin and dropping in some deep yellow. Sorry about that glare. I'm also adding a pretty bold orange. The darkest color here is burnt sienna plus some purple. And again, as this dries, the colors will blend and calm down. This woman has beautiful dark skin that I'm creating with a mixture of burnt sienna and purple along with the yellow and orange. This will become a sort of base coat and I'll go over it again with darker colors. I always try to figure out what the underlying colors are in a particular skin tone and paint them first. I'm skipping the lips and you can see her earring here. My last model skin has incredible blue undertones and I'm using cerulean here. I'm also seeing quite a bit of purple here too. Next, I'm using a mixture of sepia, which is a cool dark brown and purple to fill in the darkest parts. Now I'm gonna skip around a bit and add some clothing. It's kind of fun to work on four different pictures at the same time. Each has time to dry while I move around. The first face has calmed down and is dry enough to add the first round of details. I'm using the same colors as before, only with less water, and the lips have a bit of alizarin crimson in them. The first colors I painted have blurry boundaries now, and I'm going to tighten those up around his ear and hair. Then to really define the jaw, I'm doing another layer of orange and burnt sienna. Next, I'm going over his face and neck again with what seems like a lot of yellow. Again, this will become a lot lighter as it dries. I'm going to do a similar thing with the next face, using the same colors as before, only more intense versions. When I was learning how to paint, I was pretty timid with my colors, and my models always seemed too washed out and delicate. Don't be afraid to go a little bolder than usual. This model's lips are a mixture of alizarin crimson, purple, and a bit of burnt sienna. I skipped them at first because I didn't want the red to run into the rest of her skin. Like the others, she's getting another layer of paint to define her jawline and hair. This is purple and sepia. And I'm using that on the last model too, around her nose, mouth, jawline, hair, and ear. I'm blurring the boundaries of those dark areas with some more purplish brown. Time for the second round of details. Not too much to do here, just tightening up the nostril and lips and to be bold, I'll layer on one more wash of yellow and orange on his neck. This guy has naturally red lips, but I think I overdid them a little here, but they won't seem as bright once I've darkened the rest of his skin. There's his nose and his jaw, the same mixture of purple and sepia. And I'm adding some more orange there too. He also has a few blue areas here and there and I'm dropping some cerulean onto the wet paper. For some reason, I've always loved adding cool colors onto warm colors this way. 
a few little folds, and here's a quick dark background. The lower right face gets a muted gold background. I'm adding some more nose details to Mr. Red Lips here. Plus another layer of blue on his shirt. This is ultramarine blue. Then he gets a blurry gold and blue background. I'm going to leave the third background blank. I removed the masking fluid from the bottom pictures and now I'm going to try to soften the borders around those masked parts. Often all it takes is a damp brush and maybe a tiny bit of paint. I encourage you to practice painting a variety of skin tones. No one is the same, of course, and different lighting situations mean you'll probably never paint the same skin color twice. Do an image search or go through a magazine and try to match what you see. A person may have brown skin, but you can't just paint it brown. Look for the colors that seem to be lurking beneath that basic color. Painting skin tones is one of the toughest things to master with watercolor, but as always, the more you practice, the better you'll get. And here are the finished faces. Thanks a lot for watching and please subscribe.